Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today is our third video, I believe, or fourth video rather, in the series. In the first, in the first video, we did problems problems one through eight. In the second video, we did problems 9 through 15. 9 through 15. In the third video, we, did, we solved problems 16 through 23. And today we're going to pick up from problem number 24. Let's get going. What is the cost? What is the cost of What's, what's the cost, we are told, what's the cost in dollars of 30 bananas if one cost B cents? One cost B cents. Well, let's find out, shall we? We are told that one cost B cents. Well, if one cost B cents, we want to buy 30 of them. 30 of them should cost 30 times as much. So that implies that 30 of them should cost 30 times B cents. That's very simple, very straightforward. 30 times B cents. But the problem is, we cannot leave the answer as this. This answer is be marked as wrong. Because the question specifically asks us in terms of dollars. So we need to convert this amount, which is expressed in cents, into dollars in the proper units that, that the question is asking. How do we convert cents into dollars? Well, a dollar is made up of 100 cents. So if you take your number of cents, if you take your number of cents, 30B, and you divide it by 100, that will be converted into dollars. Why? Because the top number was. 30B cents, the top number was 30B cents, and the bottom is this 100 represents the fact that there are 100 cents per dollar. The cents are going to cancel out, and this dollar is going to end up on the top. I'm explaining too much now. But anyway, this is your answer 30B over 100 dollars. We can't leave it like this, we have to simplify it. Divide top and bottom by 10, and we end up with 0 goes away, 3 tenth B. The answer is 3 tenth B. B should be under parenthesis also. 3 tenths B, or if you like, 3B over 10 dollars. 3B divided by 10 dollars. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 25. In 10 years time, in 10 years time, I will be X years old, X years old. How old? How old am I now? How old am I now if given the fact that in 10 years from now, 10 years hence, 10 years from now, I will be X years old? The simplest, easiest, quickest way to tackle this problem is to convert this problem into an arithmetic problem. How do we convert an algebraic problem into an arithmetic problem? It's pretty simple. Make up a number here for X. Whatever you like. I'm going to pretend it's 10. So in 10 years time I will be, but well, that's not going to work, that means I was just born. That's not going to work. In 10 years time I will be, let's say, 25. If I tell you that in 10 years time I will be 25 years old, how old do you suppose I am right now? Well, I must be 15. I must be 15 because if I'm 15 right now, then 10 years hence I'll be 25. There's your answer. The answer is 
15. The question is how do we find 15? How do we arrive at 15? We simply took out 25, my age that is right now, oh, the age that I will be in 10 years time, minus the 10. Now you just substitute the variable. 25 is represented by x. So the answer is x minus 10. How old am I night right now? Well I must be x minus 10, which makes perfect sense, because in 10 years time I'll be x years old. So today I must be x minus 10. Let's do the next one. Number 26. Number 26. Let's do it on the let's just erase this whole thing. How old will I be in A years if three years ago I was B years old? Do you have any idea? Do it yourself. Pause the video and do it yourself. How old, how old will I be in a years, in a years time, if three years ago I was told, I'm told that I was B years old? You want to plug in numbers also? Let's plug in numbers here. Let's make up a number for B. If I tell you that three years ago I was 10 years old, three years ago I was 10 years old, I must be 13 today. How did we arrive at 13? We arrived at 13 by adding 10 to 3, which means that my current age, my current age must be 10 plus 3 or B plus 3 because three years ago I was B years old. If three years ago I was B years old, today I must be B plus 3. How old will I be in A years time? How old will I be in A years time? Well, so if I'm, if three years ago I was 10 years old, today I must be 13. How old would I be in, in five years time? Well, I just have to add five to it. I'll be 28. So, in three years time, that implies, that implies rather, how old would I be five years, how old would I be in five years, in five years, in, in, in A years, in A years, I will be A plus B plus 3. Or if you like, A plus B plus 3. In A years, A years from now, I will be whatever my age is right now, which we established was which we established was B plus 3, therefore A years from now I should be B plus 3 plus A, or if you like, B plus 3 plus A, or A plus B plus 3. Let's do the next one, 27. 27. In T years time, Sarah will be 60. How old is she now? In T years time, Sarah will be 60. So again, make up a number for T. Let's pretend three, T is 3. So if we are told, if we are told that in three years time she will be 60, well she must be 57 today. And we got 57, we got 57 by taking our 60 minus 3. So that's what we have to do here. Our 60 is just 60 minus 3, which is represented by T. So the answer is, she must be 60 minus T years old right now, in order for, in order for her to be 60 years of age years from now. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number 28.
is to number 28 on the top. Six years from now, Mike will be five years old. How old was he How old was he Z years from now if we are told that X years from now will be Y years old X years from now will be Y years old again plug in numbers if it makes your life easier so if you're told that three years from now, three years from now, Mike will be 30 years old. Let's just stop there. If we know that three years from now he'll be 30 years old, what do we infer from that? What do we gather from that? What do we surmise from that? What do we extract from that? What we extract from that, what we surmise from that is that in order for him to be 30 years old, three years from now, he must be 27 years old as of right now. Let's make a note. His current age, his current age must be 27, which is simply 30 minus 3. Now we substitute our variables. So his current age must be 30 minus 3. 30 is represented by letter Y. His current age must be Y minus X. So that's his current age. We have established his current age. How old will he be 5 years from now? Or five years from now, he must be 27 plus 5. This is his current age, 27. Therefore, how old will he be? How old was he? Oh, no, that's not what he's asking us. How old was he? Not will be. This is not future. How old was he five years from now? Oh, this one has to pay attention. You see, I almost made a boo boo. How old will he be? How old? Not will he be, rather. I did it again. How old was he five years ago? Well, five years ago, Whatever his current age is, we subtract 5 from it. So uh, 5 years ago, 5 years ago, he must have been, he must have been, whatever his current age is, which we established was 27, based on these numbers that we plugged in, 30 and 3, 5 years ago he must have been 27 minus 5. 27 is his current age which is represented by y minus x. So the 27 is just y minus x. And minus 5, which is your z. There is your answer. The final answer is, how old was he z years ago? The answer is, z years ago he was y minus x minus z years old. That's it. Just keep it simple, one step at a time. If you are beginners, if you're just starting out learning how to solve algebra word problems. It takes some time to get hang of these things and once you get hang of these basic concepts then we'll go on to building some more complex problems. Do you understand? But the first 50 or so problems that we're going to do are going to be quite simple, quite easy. That was it, number 28. Let's do number 29. Number 29. What value of x will make 3x equal to 4287? 4,287. Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. What value of x will make 3x equal to 57? So we want 3x to be equal to 4,287. The question is, what value of x will do the trick? Let's find out. We have 3x equals to this quantity. Let's divide both sides of the equation by 3. 
and we will have our answer. 3 cancels out and x equals to this quantity divided by 3. The question is, is that quantity even divisible by 3? 4287 is it divisible by 3? And if you do not know the answer to that, whether or not this number is evenly divisible by 3, watch the video site that you see here in the basic math series. In the basic math, it says up to 200. You don't have to watch all the way up to 200. Watch the first 100 videos where we learn divisibility rule and where we learn how to divide numbers by, where we, where we learn how to do simple divisions without having to do the long divisions. We learn in that series that a number is divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits, SUM sum of the digits is divisible by 3. Here the sum of the digits happens to be 4 plus 2 is 6 and 6 of course is divisible by 3. So we can, these two digits are divisible by 3. 8 plus 7 is 15 and 15 is divisible by 3. So the whole number must be divisible by 3. Let's divide it, shall we? How many 3's does 4 have? 4 has 1 3. 4 has 1 3. The remaining one goes and joins the 2 and becomes 12. The remaining one goes and joins the 2 and becomes 12 and 12 has 4 3's. How many threes does 8 have? 8 has 2 threes. 2 threes are 6. After we take away 6 from the 8, we have remainder, remainder of 2. That remainder of 2 goes and joins the 7 and becomes 27. And 27 has 9 threes. There you go. The answer is our x is equal to 1429 in order for 1429 29 times 3 to be equal to 4,287. Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do the next one, number 30. Number 30. What value of y, what value of y will make 7y equal to Seventy one thousand four hundred and sixty three. Let's find out, shall we? So now we want seven Y to be equal to seventy one thousand four hundred and sixty three. Divide both sides by seven. And the 7 cancels out and y equals to this quantity, 71,463 divided by 7. The question is, how do we figure out if this number is even divisible by 7? And the answer is, alas, there is no straightforward way of figuring it out if a, number is, if a given number is divisible by 7. We simply have to do it out and see what happens. If we have a remainder, then we have a remainder. If we don't have a remainder, then it was then it was evenly divisible by 3, uh, div evenly divisible by 7. Let's do it, shall we? Let's get going. Pay very close attention, otherwise you're going to get lost. How many 7s does 7 have? 7 has 1 7. 7 has 1 7. Okay? Pay attention. How many, how many 7 does 1 have? 1 has no 7s. 1 has no 7s. So then what, the, what, what happens to that 1? What happens to that 1? That one goes and joins the 4 and becomes 14. That one goes and joins the 4 and becomes 14. And how many 7 does 14 have? 14 has 2 7s. See how we cross them out together. 14 has 2 7s. How many 7 does 6 have? 6 has no 7s. 6 has no 7s. That 6 is going to go and join the 3 and become 63. And how many 7 does 63 have? 63 has, no, 63, 63 has, 63 has 9, 7, because 9, 7 is a 63. There is your answer, 10,209. 10, what we're going to do now is to do the same exact problem, same exact division problem, but instead of doing it like this, we're going to do the long division, so that you can understand the logic and the method and the arguments that we're making here. Let's do it long division here on the top, and you will see what happens. I'm going to raise all of this thing. What? Same exact thing we're going to do in the long division. 71,463. 463. We're going to divide it by 7. What, what happens? Okay. How many 7 does 7 have? 
How many seven does seven have? Seven has one seven. How many sevens does one have? How many sevens does one have? One has no seven. One has no seven. That one goes and joins the four. That one goes and joins the four and become fourteen. How many sevens does fourteen have? Fourteen has two sevens. This six comes down. How many sevens does six have? Six has no sevens. Six has no sevens. That six goes and joins the three and become sixty-three. That six goes and joins the three and becomes sixty-three. And sixty-three has nine sevens. Voila. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I know.